Sermon Review, Trusting Beyond Knowing by Bishop T.D. Jakes. The author of this sermon emphasizes the significance of trusting before knowing and seeing. He builds his sermon on the Palm Sunday commemoration, the triumphant entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem as a Messiah or King of Kingdoms on the back of a donkey is narrated in Matthew 29, one through nine. People rejoice because the Messiah has arrived to save them from repressive Roman rule and Jesus is welcomed as a king. However, Jesus' disciples were not overjoyed since they already knew Jesus would be arrested and tried within a week. Thomas is willing to die beside Jesus. The disciples were very worried because they had no idea what would happen to them once Jesus was captured. Despite all the uncertainty, the disciples chose to stick by the side of Christ. This poses the question, are you willing to stand at Jesus' side in the face of adversity? Are you willing to follow Jesus even if you face persecution? Walking with Jesus only when he was doing miracles raising the dead, feeding the 5,000, or treating the sick was not true discipleship, and the disciples knew that. True discipleship is standing with Jesus at his execution. When people make fun of God's word, when people make fun of Christ's existence, when people make fun of Christ's death, which is when you are expected to rise up and defend his word. That, my friends, is genuine discipleship. Even when everything seems to be falling apart, choose to stand with Christ. Take a listen to Matthew 21, one through nine, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The location of the donkey's tether was known to Jesus. He most likely knew the rope that tethered the donkey. Consider that for a moment. Because he is God, Jesus knows all there is to know. Jesus is aware of your predicament long before you even express it. When the disciples traveled to the village, they discovered the donkey precisely as Jesus had described. Jesus has always known. He is still thinking about you. Nothing and no one will be able to stop you when the time comes for you to be set free. Jesus is aware of your whereabouts. He understands your challenges regardless of your background. Nothing will be able to stop Jesus from allowing you to be released from your circumstances. Everything will fall into place once he sends his word. Consider that for a moment. The donkey was in a distant village, but he knew where it was. He knows all there is to know about all fish. He can count the hairs on your head, implying he knows all there is to know about your life. Jesus Christ, like his Father, possesses this intelligence. He knows you. He loves you and wishes for nothing but the best for you. He gave his life for you. Tell me about a bigger sacrifice. Stop worrying and begin to believe. Stop spending your time attempting to educate him about your predicament. He already knows more about it than you do. He is well aware of your whereabouts. Christ has an infinite amount of information about you. His knowledge knows no limits. It runs deep. Imagine that. Jesus knew where he would find the rent and dispatched the disciples to retrieve it from a fish's mouth. Because you mentioned it, 
doors will open. Because your name is blessed, you will send people in your name, and they will not be turned back. Many people will be motivated by your name. Your name will be cherished. When Jesus sent his disciples after the donkey, he left them a message saying that it was he who sent them, if anybody inquired. Things will work out for you if you have God's favor. You will get hired because you have God's blessing. Because you have God's favor, you will get admitted to an Ivy League university. Your financial requirements will be met because you chose to believe in God. Just because God has blessed you and your name, you won't have to go by yourself. You'll have people to go in your name and whatever you desire will happen. That's how great God's favor is. Jesus, his son, had it. You can have it too. A week later, the same people who had praised him would insult him by crowning him with thorns and proclaiming him to be the Jewish king. They had no idea that Jesus was both a Jewish ruler and the Messiah. People who talk praises to your face are the same people who would condemn you if they had the opportunity. Because he had a higher purpose of fulfilling, dying for your and my sins, Jesus was not carried away by their enthusiasm or plaudits. Do not be sidetracked by other people's acceptance or criticism of you. Instead, stay focused on your goal. Christ's trip into Jerusalem was always forward, never backward. He continued regardless of what was ahead. God wants you to take his tasks without ifs and buts. He wants you to trust him for the greater good. Jesus riding on a donkey meant he was fulfilling the prophecy as per the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 through 10. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The Jews had been enslaved to the Romans, who were their masters. They were struggling to breathe. Their way of life had been contaminated. Their religion had been called into question. They had a half-Jewish, half-Greek king who never accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah. The Jews were caught in this hope in Zechariah's chapter 9 prophecy. They were held captive by hope. They believed God would grant them double for their trouble one day, and that day had arrived. Instead of riding a chariot, Jesus rode a donkey. He came to demonstrate that he is a God of the oppressed, persecuted and mistreated. Jesus descended from the heavens to come down to our level. God came for your sake. It doesn't matter under whose or what control you are under. He will redeem you. The triumphant entrance demonstrates how far the Jews went to welcome Jesus. Some people set their clocks down so that the Messiah may pass by. The Israeli people were treated horribly in their nation. Imagine someone seizing control of the house you have been paying your mortgage on for years and forcing you to answer to them or pay the taxes. You have been called to put your faith in the Messiah, believing that he will make everything right in the day of judgment. Amid your suffering and maltreatment, you have been called to stay true to God. God will quickly take charge of your circumstance. God will respond to your cries when the moment is right. He has sent Jesus forth as your Messiah to deliver you from sin. It is difficult to deal with the anxiety of not knowing how things will end out. You have no idea what will happen tomorrow, but you must have faith. You have no idea whether or not your children attend university. You have no idea if they are wasting your money by smoking up their tuition, or if they're pregnant or HIV positive when they return home. You have no idea if you will be laid off tomorrow. You don't always know if you will be okay, but you simply trust them. You are not sure how to put your house back together following a separation. You have no idea if your relative will survive treatment. You have no idea. You don't know if your relative will make it out of chemo. You don't know if they'll accept you in that new community that you have moved into. There's a lot of uncertainty, 
but God wants you to trust without knowing. That is the essence of faith. Today, I want you to know that if you insist on understanding everything, you will miss out on the opportunity to collaborate with God. Being a child of God benefits allowing you to trust without understanding what will happen. Anxiety is caused by a need to know everything. Being at ease with uncertainty is part of walking with God. It is fine if you do not know. Stop trying to be in charge of everything. When the Israelites saw Jesus, they mistook him for the start of a new kingdom. It was a unique type of kingdom, one that had been created in heaven. And it was because they were dissatisfied that they crucified him. God's plan did not include what was expected. How often have you gotten mad with God because you think he's let you down? God does not work for you, but you work for God. He requires you to trust without knowing, like Abraham. That is how you are supposed to live your life. Today, God's word to you is as follows. It will be waiting for you when you arrive. By taking the initial step of faith, believing without seeing, you must trust God. God maintains that you have no idea what he has planned for you. You must trust him despite not knowing what he has planned for you. Faith is about what you do not know, not what you do know. Those who have not seen, but yet believe are blessed. Make an effort to become one.